Um, hi, everybody. Um, I'm Ian. I use they, them pronouns, and I'm here with the Digital Media Lab. Today in the stream, I'll be working on showing you how to use Canva, which is a free um, website that helps you use um, or helps you create a lot of different uh, graphics. I use it all the time because I don't actually have, hi, Claire. Um, I don't have Illustrator, and I don't think my laptop could support Illustrator, even if it wanted to. Um, so this is a real easy way that you can spice up your presentations. You can make flyers. As you can see here, just some of these that I have on my screen are some that I've created throughout my time here at NC State. And mostly all of these are actually for a club that I run, but they're all real events that you know happened around campus um, or with different community partners. And so what I guess I wanted to do was try making um, just a simple presentation title slide, just so that, for example, if you had a presentation that was important for you or you wanted to go the extra mile, um, you could go ahead and make a custom graphic and later just import it into Google Drive. It's super simple. Um, all it just really takes is some playing around with. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and go to the Canva homepage. And particularly for this account, I went ahead and used my NCSU uh, email. And it doesn't give you any perks, but it's a lot easier for me to separate personal projects from professional projects and things like that. Um, so what you want to do is click create a design and then it gives you some options right here a lot of people like to make instagram posts um, and stories because canva has a really great feature where you can put little gifts and make your posts interactive a little bit um, so if you ever see your friends posting things <laughs> for their club or different events for their fraternity or sorority, there's a pretty good chance they did it on this website. Um, so here's are some of the options here. You can do anything basically here. You could even apparently make a t-shirt design. But what I like to do is usually go over here to the templates and then look for um, just the type of project that I'm going for. You can also go ahead and start from scratch and just go ahead and click, um, where is it actually? Actually, I don't see it, but there's an option where you can just go ahead and like start from scratch. There's like nothing on there. There's no templates or anything like that. What I like to do for, <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't, I've never messed around with that. I've never made anything for print, um, Claire, but I think that it would be really nice to, um, an invoice. Okay. So I like to use mostly the Facebook cover because I think it's like a pretty versatile um, format. And by that, I mean like just the ratio, it fits pretty well with presentations, um, wallpapers and backgrounds, things like that. And you don't have to worry too much about making sure your file is the right height and width and stuff like that. So here's the blank Facebook cover, but you also see that there's a lot of different options. Um, one of the cool things about Canva is that you can actually create your own templates. And a lot of these that you see here were created just by people who use Canva a lot. Um, and usually they're just using elements that are already provided by Canva. So if you wanted to as well, you can make your own designs. And I think that you can actually make a small profit off of that, but that's not what we're going to do here. Um, so for this one, I guess we should come up with a topic of what this pretend presentation is about. If you guys have any ideas in the chat, I'd appreciate that right here. Do you have any ideas, Isaac? Um, I'm thinking maybe 
a science-y type project, something that doesn't have to take too much. Um, it doesn't take you knowing a lot about it, I guess. Well, I guess we could, it would be maybe a little meta if we went ahead and made a presentation about the library <laughs> or just uh, what we're doing in the DML and stuff like that. So I think that I'll go ahead with that idea, just if like someone had never been to the DML, um, it would be like, a, I guess, a fake introduction presentation, even though we do have one of those already. Um, so scrolling down here, there's, again, a lot more different template options. And I'll go ahead and show you like what a template kind of consists of. Uh, let's see. This one seems kind of cool. So as you can see, there's like very minimal controls. You don't really need a lot to get started with Canva. It's very beginner friendly. And that's something that I really like and I recommend um, to a lot of students. <laughs> Earthquakes. Okay, that's, oh, what have you been studying, I guess, Isaac, with uh, earthquakes? <laughs> um, just like if you could put that in the chat. So you can see this is one entire element. Uh, if you want to delete something from Canva, it's pretty easy. You would just drag it off the screen. Let's see. Let's make this 75%. Just drag it completely off the screen, and it would automatically delete itself. If you wanted to make a second page, for example, for a presentation, you would just click the Add Page button and then you have another one. You can duplicate uh, the first page if you wanted to. And I like to do that sometimes just to compare different ideas. If I think that there is a better way of designing something, but I don't want to lose all my work, or I don't want to keep clicking back and forth between two different windows, it's a really easy way to just test out some ideas and compare and, and contrast. So here you can see that there are two parts to this. And usually what Canva does is for templates, it lets you select a title and a subtitle. Under text, you can see that there's heading and then subheading and then text. And the really cool thing about this is that Canva has the feature of grouping and ungrouping items similar to Illustrator. And right here, I'm just going to ungroup the items so you can see what happens. So now we have this heading or title block, and it moves independently without this. If for some reason I wanted it to be set up in this way, uh, maybe we're going for a bit more creative endeavor here, then all you would have to do is drag over the two things you want to group together and click the group button. You can also automatically set the position and alignment of any part of your design. So if I wanted this to be set so that it was in the middle of the page, then that would just be clicking middle and then center. And now you know that this is perfectly centered on your page, which is another great feature because it's really hard to make things look balanced and make sense in relation to other parts if you don't have a lot of experience with graphic design. But this way you can easily know that everything is um, perfectly horizontal, nothing's tilted. Oh yeah, group function. Um, you can easily move things around and you don't have to worry if it's crooked or if it doesn't align well or um, the page isn't balanced in the like the art sense of everything's too clustered or everything's too far apart and everything looks just a little off. 
So for this one, I think that it would be a good idea to go ahead and maybe start off with some text. There's a lot of different pre-made fonts that all come with their own little effects and things like that. Um, I tend to use things that have like neon in them and really try going for like a, a space theme with as many things that I can, just as a personal preference. But here I think that this thank you font is kind of nice. And I think that we could use that to just retype and put like welcome or something like that as just a blank normal introduction slide before we even start the presentation. So if you have any pre-made um, title blocks or text, all you have to do is just click it and replace it with whatever you want. And here we run into the issue where it's a little too big for what we're trying to do. But with the ungrouping function, it's a pretty easy fix. We can move this aside for a second just to make sure we're writing uh, what we intended to. And then we can go ahead and select everything and independently decrease the font. When some items are grouped together and you try decreasing the font, it'll decrease them proportionately. And so we would still have a little bit of that overlap that we don't really want in our presentation. So now that we have our, um, our little welcome bit of text, we don't really need this other one. So we can go ahead and delete it. I really like nitpicking or picking apart different types of templates for just specific parts that I like and then kind of making something of my own using it. If you don't want to adjust the font manually up here, then you can always just grab one of the corners of whatever you're working with and it'll proportionally increase it, keeping the same angle, keeping the same um, features or anything that you might have done to your text. There's this little icon underneath that lets you rotate words. And so these little features here and controls are really just like PowerPoint or if you were just doing a Google presentation. Another neat factor here is that you can see the degree that you're literally tilting your text. So if for some reason you wanted this at a 45 degree angle, you know exactly where it is. And if you weren't sure if your item was uh, completely straight or not, you could click right here and it lets you know that you're at four degrees or you're not actually at a perfect, perfectly straight angle, anything like that. Um, so here we have our little welcome slide. And I think that we could add just a little bit of text underneath saying like uh, that the presentation will be starting soon or something like that, maybe even the date, or I guess we should say welcome to the DML. So people and theoretically would know where they were. <laughs> Um, and I'll just get rid of that little exclamation mark because I, I guess that doesn't really make sense. Now, moving it around, this little bit of text, you can see whether you're centered or not by these little purple guidelines. Um, and it also tells you if you're uh, balanced or like having a, like you have a off-centered or um, relationship with another piece of text or pictures or anything. These little guidelines really help you kind of work around knowing too much about design. Um, I don't remember what it's called, but it's some type of theory or 
rule almost that lets you know how to use the space of any like blank presentation or image and it usually will divide it into like several boxes but that's a lot to understand and it's not necessary to make good presentations here for example it lets you know that this is a good place to put this element of text because it, if you did you'd have a nice up order to make a relationship with any other element that you put here so if i wanted to just copy and paste let's see select it yeah, copy and then paste it then it would also let me know on this side where that border is and that it's aligned with the piece of text on the left we don't really need that so i'm just going to delete it and make it centered let's see there we go and i don't really like how bland this is so i'm just going to select that little piece of text and go right here to the different font options they offer you like a nice little preview and there's so many options so you could really make any type of presentation any type of theme here um i'm gonna try this one here and see what it looks like so it's pretty bold i think that we could go for something maybe not as bold and aggressive maybe something a little spaced out like this that looks pretty fine to me at the moment i think that it should probably this slide should probably have like um a little bit of text right here to say like you know um well well we have welcome we have where we are so maybe just the date or something like that and for this one, I'll just put today's date. Hopefully I have this right. So all of this looks really good to me. So what I'll go ahead and do is just group it at the moment so that I don't accidentally move something I don't mean to. And I'll go look for some, uh, I guess, little illustrations that might make sense. Everything that you'll need for Canva is going to be right here in this left sidebar. So we're talking about the library, we're talking about digital media here. So let's look up library and see what pulls up. So here we have little images of books. We have <laughs> some vague signs of referring to a library and then we have like an actual like pretty detailed illustration of a library right there all of these images available in canva are all vector images so it doesn't matter how much you stretch them out they're never going to lose the quality um and that's the really big difference between like vector and rasterized if you ever hear someone talking about that don't freak out. It just means pixels versus um, ratios, basically. I don't actually like that image, so we're just going to drop it off the screen. Um, you can also upload images, too. So if you like found a really neat image of our library, for example, DHL or Hunt or any of the other college libraries, then you could just go ahead and upload it you can see some of the stuff that i've worked on here in presentations and for these all i really did was go into another tab and google whatever i was looking for with um transparent added at the end to make sure that there wasn't any background yeah that's also to your advantage um if you like making your own designs or you have your own custom logo so back here, I have the NC State logo, for example, and I have this logo that was made for um, a student org. Okay. So 
I don't really know if I like any of these, honestly. But we'll go ahead and pick something and see if we can work with it. And if not, we can always you know, get rid of it, find something else. I think I personally like this little graphic. Where was it? Um, this one right here. It's very minimalistic and it's just line art, but I kind of dig that. If for some reason we didn't like these colors that were available, what you can usually do is, let's see, will let me do it? No, let's try this just for the point of showing what you can do in here. Okay, so when you click on certain images or elements, it'll pop up this little block right here and it's to indicate whatever colors are um, in that little image. So if we wanted to change it to one of these basic colors, we could go ahead and just click it. And now all of the line art is um, this nice little coral color. For more complex images, let's see if it'll work here. It'll give you a color option for each individual um, bit of color that exists in here. So I could make this whatever is blue into this coral color and anything that's yellow into maybe this orange. And that's a really great uh, way to just keep everything uh, uniformed. And you can also use hex codes for specific colors if you'd like to. You can also, um, I guess we'll just use this one again. If you wanted to identify a certain color you really liked in a different image, then you can click here and it'll tell you the hex code that it is. And it's pre-selected for you to just copy, click whatever other image you're trying to match with it, and paste the new code. So that way we're guaranteed that these are the same color. And as you can see, if I moved it above this one, it's like clearly the same blue. Um, another thing you can do is use the positions feature again, but then you can use these features of forward or backwards, like layers in Photoshop or Illustrator, and you can move it forward or backwards. And the same positions here that we use to align our text can be used with images, icons, anything. So I can move it to the dead center here, to the left, the right, bottom. Um, so that's kind of like, in my opinion, like my best friend in Canva, just because I'll try to put something centered or to a certain border or something in relation, or try to make a relation between two different um, images or elements and I'll just kind of forget that I never actually tried to align it. So things will come out wonky after I see it being on a big screen, which oh, of course bothers me a lot. Maybe it doesn't bother you, but at least for me, I don't really like um, having things not perfectly straight or like tilted to the angle that I want to, or just having the most amount of control is usually better when you're making a design. So we have these books right here and we're gonna just leave them here. And now since we have something to kind of represent, we're in a library, um, we can think about what's in the digital media lab. So I'm going to pull up computers because maybe you've never been to the digital media lab, but there's a lot of different equipment there for you to work with. Um, just from the get-go. At first glance, it kind of just looks like a computer lab, but there's, of course, like studios and things like that. So next, after we pick a computer image, then we can go ahead and try to found, find something that resembles uh, some of the other things offered there. So some sound equipment to kind of represent um, the recording booths that are available there, and maybe some mics printers, something like that. 
there's a simple little computer icon. And we're just going to um, work with that for now. Right here, you can see that there's this little pop-up that wasn't there before. And it's called Magic Res uh, Recommendations. And it'll give you a little bit of a sample. And you can see that these kind of look like they're made in the same design. What Magic Recommendations does is that it'll pull up anything that was made usually by the same artist. I guess that's what we're going to call them, artists. Um, or anything that matches that same style. So here you can see how this clearly looks like it's part of a set. I'm going to keep this mic just in case. Let's see. I think some headphones could be kind of neat. Yeah, the color customization is like one of my favorite features about Canva, um, just because it's super straightforward. And at least in my opinion, using Canva really prepares me to start using Illustrator, just because it tries to mimic it as much as possible with minimizing how many different tools or features you have to go through to get what you want. This one looks kind of neat to me. It might be a little too vague. When I'm not completely sure where I'm going with the design, like I hadn't planned it out or made a sketch or anything like that, then I like to just grab different images that I think could work and then just kind of decide between some of them to see which one will stay. Or if I don't end up using some of those little uh, icons or designs, then it's just really easy to just get rid of them later on. But just to have like a placeholder. Hmm. This mic is just a little cooler in my opinion. Oh, oh look at that. A lot of these are kind of like what we're looking for for the Digital Media Lab. This entire set right here is looks like it's a part of like a podcasting um, illustration set. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And before I do that, I'm just going to see if there's anything else that I kind of like. Uh, hmm. I'll go ahead and grab this printer for now. And then here again and see what else might be in store here. Oh, look at that. This one is um, a pre-made image for Apple Podcasts. And there's also like a lot of other ones for different apps too. Um, so you don't have to worry about copyright issues when you see these little images here in Canva because they've already been cleared through the website um, and more directly, I mean like the people who are in charge of copyright through Canva, I guess. None of these really look like uh, particularly useful since we got some of these standard ones going on here. I go, oh, that's a copy. We'll get rid of that. And with that, I think we're pretty okay with some of the elements we have. If there's anything you think that we're kind of missing that symbolizes a little bit of the, what the DML has, um, then you could drop it in the chat, even though it's just right now two people. Um, you guys are free to collaborate whenever you want to chime in of what we think you think we could do here differently, then like I'd love to hear it because it helps me kind of figure out uh, what directions we could go with this. So now I'm going to try to just go in and make these colors match a little bit of what our logo has. So I'll go ahead and resize these first. They're a little smaller. We don't want anything that's too large. And of course, like nothing has to be directly proportional. If we wanted to keep this mic large, I think it'd be okay, but we're just going to bring it down just a little bit. I'm trying to keep everything in line. Ooh, keyboards. 
I'll definitely look at that in a second. Put these here where they're not really in the way. I think this screen could be just a little larger. That makes more sense. Okay. And these could be just that much larger. That can stay it's that size. And let's go on a little hunt for a keyboard that we like. Well, we got a couple of different options here. This one, I think that could be cool if we made maybe these black parts the same color as the background. So I'll go ahead and click on the background, get that hex key, click back on this little keyboard and change the black color to the color of the background. And now that looks like it matches the liner a lot better of these other little elements. So we'll go ahead and keep that for now. Uh -huh. I guess we could also grab some actual little music notes too. Hmm. Sometimes I get really distracted and I'll just go ahead and like scroll through all of the different images and things like that. Um, just because like I'm kind of impressed by what other people have done and it kind of gives me some more ideas for my own illustrations and stuff like that. Um, If you want to customize the little icons and images that you choose and make them a part of your theme, the best option is to choose stuff that has multiple colors. Because if there's only one color, then you only have one color that you can really change, as you can see here. And we want to make sure that everything is uniformed, but also like kind of stylistic. So we want to go ahead and grab something that has like maybe like three colors is usually what I like to pick. Sometimes the simple colors are like really useful. Uh, but I think that in this case, we don't want anything to be too bland. So we'll just grab a couple of different things that one with a solid uh, like things that have different variants. So these are just a solid color. I just really like that green. I think that we can grab this one here it has two colors. And it also has an entire little line of different notes. So we can peek at that real quick and see if there's anything else that we really like in here. Mm. I think we're good. Everything else seems a little uh, tacky maybe like it wouldn't make sense with every everything else we have here and this itself is pushing a little bit but it looks the most like the cleanest out of all of these different options all right we're just going to clear out of this and shrink this down we're going to Maybe we could go ahead and like use one of the colors that are on here. Or not. Okay. Some images and stuff like that are locked so that you can't tamper with them a little bit. And that's usually just a choice that the artist made. So if you wanted to customize something, you might want to check for that just in case. But if you're not, you know, too committed to any one design or color palette or anything like that, then you can always just work with it. And sometimes if you find one little icon or image that you really, really like, you can make an entire theme out of just that. But I think here we want to have the most control since we already have this one really pretty welcome um font going on. 
I'll go ahead and rotate this one inward. This one maybe won't stay actually, but we'll decide that later. This looks pretty all right to me. I think that it'd probably look best if we put it right next to this little welcome sign. And we could even go ahead and put it behind it so it looks like it's these books are peeping out. So selecting the image, going to position, and just moving it backwards. And now it's right behind, oh, that's weird. Huh. It's right behind this word, but it looks like it's kind of cutting through there. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on there. I think that what's happening is that these little colors right behind just the white part are actually like shadows that are a little transparent. Hmm. And that's why these books can kind of cut through them. So we'll just angle it a little bit so it doesn't look like they're really there. See, can't tell. Move this right here. Maybe these should be smaller. I think this mic looks pretty sound with these little music notes. I'm gonna tilt them a little bit just so it looks like there's a little bit of movement. If everything were just to be perfectly flat, um, your design might be a little dull, even if you put in a lot of effort and put a lot of colors in there. Um, of course, we don't want to overdo it, but if we're certain we want two little elements to go together, it's best to just figure out how you want them to look together and oh, group them so that you don't lose that one uh I guess that one little bit you worked kind of hard on, or maybe not that hard, but just something that you think looks best. And then while we're at it, we can go ahead and group the books with the title page, move these around or change the colors, and then we can go ahead and make um, our actual slides. So when you want to group something with another two objects or so that are already grouped, um, you actually do have to select the part that is grouped together and ungroup them, which is the only complaint I think I have with Canva. So here I'm just going to click shift to hold my selection and then right click that and group them again. And now I know that no matter where I drag this, I'm not going to leave behind the books or any of these titles. And I'm just going to check that it's centered again. That's fine with me. We'll click this keyboard and try to make it match a little better. So this pink, I think that looks a little better right there. It matches pretty well. The yellow, I think, can stay for now. This green part, I think, would be nice if it matched this music note, these music notes over here. So I'll go ahead and grab the hex key again. Click this element and change it to give some more uniformity to this slide. I think that's OK. So I'll leave it for now. Um, and then this over here, give it a pretty blue, a bright blue color. And the headband, we could give it like a really bright color too. We could also match it with the green going on there. It's not completely necessary, of course, but Making things matches, I think, is a really big part of design. <laughs> There's a lot of planning, of course, that goes behind it. But visually, this is um, pretty important, too, just because 
you can plan a really great design, but at the end of the day, if it doesn't really uh, captivate or your audience or like really catch the eye, then it's not doing its job. Mm. That's a nice little contrast. This yellow should really can be changed because the yellow, I think, is just a little too much. Um, this little printer, I guess it makes sense if it's set up right next to a, a computer monitor. So we'll just, oh. Make it, we can make the blue as the same color as the actual monitor there. Or we can make it pink, that might work better. And then the gray can just turn into that color. And now these look a little bit like a set. So I'll go ahead and group those two together. Uh, this music note, I think we're not going to end up using. And then this screen is going to match the um, monitor and the printer. So that looks like a pretty good amount of contrast, but not too much where it's like a little crazy. All of that seems to go together for now. Um, if we want to, we can always like change that background color and come back to it. So here is the second page that I made. And what I like to do, again, for presentations particularly, is make a slide that just kind of has the standard background that I want. Um, and then I'll upload it as the theme option. And I'll show that before the end of the stream, just so you actually know how to use it this and incorporate it for class or club meetings or anything like that. So what we want to do here is um, kind of make a little border so that your text really stands out and doesn't get in the way um, or doesn't overlap with any of the little design elements that you selected. So I'll just go ahead and pick maybe just these headphones. I'll go ahead and copy them click the page I want to add them to and keep it right there in the little corner. And then I can go ahead and grab like this whole mic situation with the music notes. Oh, they're ungrouped. Copy that, bring it back down. And I think that's a pretty good two, like two elements to have here, just so there's a kind of a consistent theme. What I'm also going to do is add a little bit of a border. Um, and for that, what I'm going to do under elements is just click on lines. And then we have, of course, a really expansive selection of lines. If we wanted to go ahead and make our own border, then I think this is the best option because you can always make um, a custom border with different line patterns. So here, I'm just going to make this 90 degrees. I'll go ahead and make it a reasonable width, I guess. That would probably be in our best interest. And then you can see here that Canva is already guiding us to make um, a bit of a rectangle situation. So you don't have to worry again if it's if you're not sure if it's straight or not. Uh, Canva will kind of guide you in general. It'll try to project the best it can of what you're what you're attempting, and lock everything in place. So there's an option we could go with. But Canva also has, I think they have like borders. So I'm just going to clear my search selection so 
that it'll show me um, all the options and under frames. I think that's where you want to go. Nope. That's not it. I think it's going to be shapes probably. Yeah. So you can see here, there's just some pre-made outlines. These are all transparent, so you don't have to, or all the ones that are just lines are all transparent, so you don't have to worry about um, trying to mess with them. Here's a pretty nice frame. This one is not exactly it. Uh -huh. I'm just going to drag that here because it looks like it could be something that works for us. Okay, and that looks like as much as it's going to load. So I'll go ahead and bring out just some options and go ahead and delete this makeshift frame, makeshift frame that I came up with earlier. And we're just going to try testing them out. Since I don't want these in the way, I'm just going to select them and throw them back onto our title screen for the moment, just so we don't lose them in the process of trying to see if this works for us or not. OK, so that's about the right width. And that's an exact match. I don't think it's like the worst. So I'll just go ahead and stick with it. Because a lot of this is just really for um, the purpose of like demonstrating what you could do. I'm going to send it to the very back so it doesn't get in the way. And then see if I can just kind of rearrange these uh, elements so that they're not in the way of that border. And now you have a pretty good um, space to work with for putting your text. I can go ahead and even make these smaller just to distinguish them a little bit more from the title page. I actually like this page maybe a little better than the title page, so we can go back and fix that later. Uh -huh. I'm going to go ahead and stick with that one. I think it's not too much and not too little either. So since you're going to use this for a presentation, you only really need one background image because you'll go ahead and upload that and it'll duplicate to all of your slides unless you wanted to have like special title slides or in between slides or anything like that. And that's all you really need. I'm going to go ahead and come back to this title slide and move things around a little bit. I think that if we switch these, it might look a little better. And maybe if we shrunk some elements, um, this would look a little more presentable. Hold this the other way so it's not in the way of the text. Make this one a little smaller too. And that keeps it all in frame. And that's what our presentation slide would look like. The first slide. I'm just going to tweak things a little bit more. That's in line with the keyboard, so that looks pretty good to me. And now we can adjust this welcome a little bit if we wanted to. So for this, again, you have to ungroup, click on the one thing you're trying to work on. And here's this effects option, um, which is why I chose this font to show you what you could do. If you click effects, it'll show you any effects applied already onto the word. And we see that there's this color right here. 
uh, we see that the effect is echo. And if we wanted to change it, we could change it to just be normal welcome. That's a little boring. Uh, we could give it a shadow, um, a lift. You can usually just like click around and see what you have. Um, some other options here are like curving the font. But no matter what uh, effect that you select, it has these little options to fine tune it to something that you want. Now, I'm going to try some of the different colors that we already have in our document. And that's usually listed under the document colors. Canva will automatically detect the colors you're using. So that way you don't have to really struggle too much and try to figure out if you got the exact same color. Oh, thank you, Isaac. Thank you. <laughs> uh, that green is interesting. I guess it's the best word. Mm. I think that maybe just that set of pink, which is, I guess, where we started off with, is fine with me. So we can go ahead and maybe give effects to some of the other little bits of font. And here, I'm just going to give it a shadow, um, which you can't really see unless I were to like really zoom in. You can kind of see right here that it looks a little different. So I'll go ahead and click that and then click one of the other colors, like that green. I think that was actually really nice. And then offset it. So distance it from the main text um, until I like what I see. I think that's pretty good. Uh, the angle looks fine to me, but how transparent the green is, is making the green look a little dull. And the whole point for that green, honestly, to me is that it's like bold, but not too overwhelming since you have other colors that really match. But if you were to have it all the way, then it would be 100% illegible. Mm. I think 60 is a pretty okay balance. And if we wanted to, we could always make the white parts green and then the other parts um, could be like any of the blues or pinks that we have here. This font is a little too thin. So let's see if the bold helps or hurts the design. Um, zoom out to 75%. This is still kind of hard to read. So I'll just change that right quick. And this is not that great either. So we're just going to change the font real quick, something maybe a little easier to read. Not much better. I think sometimes a lot of uh, design is really just clicking different fonts and different colors and seeing if it looks all right. Ooh, that's kind of interesting. Don't think that's what we're going for, though. Mm. If you see anything that has a crown on Canva, it's because that's a part of their paid service. So everything that you're seeing right now is just from the free version, which is already a lot. Um, but if you really started liking Canva and you thought you were going to use it for a good amount of time, then it could be worth investing in with for the pro version. But you get mostly all of their services um, without any, uh, I guess, any like subscription. 
we'll just go back to the oh I don't know what's going on there where did this tea come from I think that's actually good font but we'll just get rid of the shadow just to make it easier to read because that's really what's important in making a presentation making sure everybody can read it and making sure everything is pretty accessible so I'll just go ahead and just pick a better font here too just something that's a little bit bolder I think that works for right now and then go back here real quickly and kind of get rid of this So we're just going to clear our effects there. Um, hmm, what's that look like? Ooh, that's really bright. We're not going to do that. Hmm. Okay, that's actually pretty all right. It like calls attention, but it's not too much. Just the teal color. And this is legible. I'm um, going to make sure that all of this is in line with each other. Um, let's see. Let's show us. There we go. That's centered to the welcome sign, and this is centered to the rest. I'll bring this down a little bit, and then we can go ahead and lock it back. In group. If you wanted to, like, I guess we can go ahead and make one more. Uh, sample slide just to give you some options and I guess we can just make this the subtitle um, slide like if you were talking about one topic and now you wanted to uh, change gears a little bit but still related then what we can go ahead and do is maybe peek at one of the fonts we've already used so this one is Lovelow and I'll go ahead and use that to just make a little title that doesn't overpower or is like more fancier than the main title slide. So we'll go here and just click it. Mm -hmm. What could we put after a title slide? And here's just a, a fake um, topic related to the DML. It's one of the things that <laughs> I guess is really important <laughs> to tell people if you've never been there. Um, the DML, you know, it's just the Digital Media Lab. And I believe it's still closed right now. But it's, oh, the extra T was earlier. Oh, yeah, it did take that away. It did. Yeah, we'll go back there in a second and just add a little two in the same font that the data is in. Um, but yeah, if you've never been to the Digital Media Lab, the Digital Media Lab is just a really great space in the library that provides computers with a lot of different software that you could use to work on videos or um any of the Adobe softwares are, are on basically all of the computers there. There's scanners. Um, if you need to go ahead and scan something in that you hand drew and work on in Photoshop. Um, hmm, there we go. They also have these amazing sound booths uh, where you can, ooh, that's not the right color there, where you can go ahead and record music, uh, work on podcasts. Some of them have keyboards in there. Um, and they also have like little sound boards, which I think is really cool um, because I haven't heard of another library that does something similar <laughs> to what the Digital Media Lab does. Mm, I think this pink works. I'm gonna go ahead and make that a little larger.
and that's centered. But I think that it could look better up here. Yeah. If there are like more subtopics in your presentation, then you just make another slide for what you need. But for the most part, um, you don't have to do too much to get a lot out of making your own designs. Since I like used the slide that I had intended to be just the blank background, I just selected everything and I'm going to paste this here so we don't lose anything that we just worked on. Oh, let me not do that. So that way this slide still exists but this other one has everything that um, we just made and it kept our elements, but it didn't keep the frame. So just scroll back down. I think it was this one. Yeah. Match that there. And then, oh, what's going on here? Mm, I guess this will work better for a store. Hmm. What did I do that first time? I think I just made it the height that I wanted. I'm just going to start from the beginning. And right now I'm just using Control Z uh, <laughs> just to undo. Nope, that was not it. Just to go ahead and go. Oh. And undo anything that I just did. OK, there we go. That's what we did. All right, so we're going to say like that this is our presentation for right now. And I'll go ahead and show you how to actually upload this so you can have your own theme in Google Drive. Um, this would also work in PowerPoint, but I think that nowadays we're all really using Google Drive. And for PowerPoint, it can be a little um, more difficult just because PowerPoint has more features. We're going to go ahead and retitle this and we'll call this um, Digital Media Lab DML Intro and Slides. We'll not make it. We're not going to make it anything too complicated. And you can download this. It'll give you uh, the options to make it a JPEG, a PDF, PDF for printing. Um, you can also make it a GIF, but that's mostly if you have like these little elements or icons that like move. And then this, this is one of the features from, from the pro service, but usually I just use PNG and then you can download only some specific pages. So you could just click the, each one as an individual image so that when you upload it, it's not going to try putting all of them in there. But I think that you can also post directly to where you want it to be shared. So yeah, here we go. Um, this one's Google Drive. Oh. Gonna just switch our uh, screens a little bit, just to, for some privacy sake. <laughs> Okay, that's my account. All right. I'm just pre-selecting my folder so you guys don't have to uh, see all of the different files in my Google Drive, just because there's so many of them. Okay, so I have an actual DML folders folder, so I'm just going to 
uh, once you guys see the screen again. And I'm going to just do it one by one. Okay, preparing our design. Cool. That's one. I guess that was a little fruitless then. Um, I know I have, there we go. Here's my DML folder. Second page. And our last page. These are all files. Where are... There you go. Third page. Cool. So now I'm just going to open Google Drive in another place and go ahead and you can see that our slides are right here. So you know they made it. <laughs> um, I'm actually going to go into my little, actually, no, I'll just do it here just for simplicity sake. I'll just make a new uh, presentation, make sure that it's a blank presentation. And we have nothing on here. Perfect. Okay. So I'm just going to get rid of any elements because we really just want everything to be a blank slide. I'm going to go ahead and, oh, well, blank and then blank. Cool. Here, what you want to do is um, for your background, you're going to choose one image and that's going to be your title slide. Um, I feel like I'm going to have to go through a lot of folders, so I'm just going to stop sharing my screen for a second. Yeah. Okay. So once you find the right folder, just going to click on what you want and insert it and click done. So when you insert an image as your background, Google will automatically make it the same uh, size as the slide and try to fit it the best it can. So that's why um, when I was saying a lot earlier at the beginning of the stream that when you have a, when you're using the Facebook cover template, like that's usually the best one because it's already close enough to the slides uh, width and length, but the, you know, Google slide will just take care of the rest. And I'm going to go ahead and do that again. So be right back. Um, oh, actually for this one, I think you guys need to see it. <laughs> So I'm going to click out of this. For here, I'm going to click theme. And you can see that there's all these little options. But if you're making your own, the simplest way to go about it is to just change the background, choose an image, um, click the one that you want to be your standard background, and then click add to theme. And so oh, we'll redo that one. So now if I were to add a new slide, it's always going to pull up this same theme, no matter where we are. And now you don't have to worry about copy and pasting or anything like that. Um, for this one, we're just going to go back and add the title slide that we wanted. Um, so here we go. Click in welcome, double click, done. And now this one particular slide is ready to go. Here, we'll go ahead and do the same thing. 
I'm going to add that little subject slide. And as long as you don't click this add to theme, um, the image that you picked will only apply to the one slide. Um, so now you can see that I can go ahead and present. And you're going to see that like this would be your title slide, just a blank slide of whatever you wanted to, and then our subject slide, which I think is like a really handy feature just so that you don't end up just using the same themes over and over again, especially if you're doing a pretty important presentation or if you're assigned to make a presentation for work or something like that. It's a pretty good way to just uh, keep a theme based off of what you're talking about. And you don't have to go through the hassle of like looking through other sites like SlideShare or Carnival Slides or whatever. Um, so you don't have to stress about going through 30 different slides just to get two that you really like. Uh, yeah, it is really great that you can do like upload straight to Drive. Something that I just remembered is that we never went back to fix the whole two situation. So I'm just going to go back here right quick. Uh, look at the font. OK, cool. Just add this here. And write two. Um, let's see, this is a size, this 20, 26 size font. So we'll go ahead and make this one the same. And it doesn't have to be this wide. If you can shrink down a text box, I usually recommend that you do because it, if it's a lot longer than it needs to be, then it's really easy to end up uh, selecting other parts of your presentation, like all these little icons with with the, <laughs> the little bit of text, and then you could be moving things that you don't really want to. Um, I'm not going to group these, but I am going to just select both of them and move them a little down so that there's enough space, but I don't lose the relationship between the two pieces of text. Okay, let's try to find that center again. I think that's okay. And just in case, I'm just going to select all of these and use that um, position feature. And I can't click center, so that's how I know that they're all centered right now. Okay, so then now I just have to select is this really 22, 26? Yeah, it is. It's just bolded? Nope, I never changed the font. <laughs> and here is the font we just used. Okay, that looks pretty uniform. Scoot that up a little bit more. And move this up a little bit more too. Oh. group that together again and we're just going to go ahead and upload it back to uh, Google Drive. Yeah. And you can see that there are of course like more options too um, and if you were to click any of these other templates it would automatically grab your design and fit it to whatever size the template is. So you want to make tags or a trifold, I guess, anything like that, stickers, it'll just make it uh, proportionate to whatever template. And if, for example, you're making a lot of promotional uh, goods for a club or something like that, you don't have to really worry about it. And we only want this title page, so. And now we 
can go back to here and replace this one uh, mishap slide. Pick our image and I can see the two right here. So I know it's that one. Done. Nice. I think I'm pretty satisfied with that. I'll go ahead and give it a little name. <laughs> Right. And another pretty cool thing is that you still get the same uh you get the same options still from Google Slides. So you don't have to worry about making your own little text box or anything. All you really have to do is just pick the type of slide you want. Um and just to show that it still works with Google Slides. Like, you still get all the same format features, but you have your own custom background. So, that's how you use uh, Canva to make a presentation. Um, maybe in the future, I can show you how to make your own little flyer. It's going to be basically the same. Um, so maybe not that. We could explore any of the other template options, like the t-shirts or stickers and stuff like that, uh, because since Canva lets you download things as a, a PNG or JPEG, you get a lot of customization options, and then you can always upload it to um, a, a different application. So you could use any sticker making applications, you could use Illustrator, or you could probably just upload it directly to a printing site um, if you're intending to use it for t-shirts, for example. And using the t-shirts template, you probably would be able to just make sure it's already the same size, but it would be in a format and a file type that a printer would, would prefer. Um, so, yeah. I think we're like almost at the end of our stream time. We have like like three minutes left. So thank you for joining me. It's been a pretty good time. It's honestly really fun to make presentations and graphics and stuff. And uh, just for the little sake of it, I'll go ahead and um, show you some of those designs that I've made up uh, a little up close again. And then I'll go ahead and hop off the stream. Let's see. Uh, here we have like a little movie night poster, if it'll load ever. And then the one that I'm second most proud of is probably um, No, I think that one's like pretty much the best. Um, as you can see here, this is like the Facebook cover size and this is an Instagram size. Um, so I tried always just making the same type of design twice for different social media. But yeah, this movie night one, for example, um, is a little on the... <laughs> Uh, retro vapor wavy side of things, but it's just another example of what you can do um, using Canva elements, like the little uh, galaxies and planets and stuff, and even these little transparent blurbs and stuff that you find on the internet um, from like little effects, like this play and timestamp and distortion. Like those are separate images I found on Google, but put together, or like even this little retro TV was something I found on Google. Um, but yeah, so hopefully you enjoyed watching this stream and you got um, a lot of good information out of it and you can use it for your own 
<laughs> application. Yeah, no one will know that you made this yourself. And when you do, um, it'll totally get you the A that you you wanted. This is what most of your grades are based off of. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But yeah, thanks again for joining us. Um, I hope you use more of the resources at the DML and uh, join us again. So again, my name is Ian and uh, it's been fun. Thank <laughs> you.